All right, we're so lucky today to be joined by international boxing agent, broker, and consultant with more than four decades of experience, Rick Glazer. Thank you so much for joining us. And I thought, uh, Rick, I, I was, uh, if the boxing people don't know who you are, there was a great quote that was posted on uh, Twitter this week by uh, Rick Merigian, who we know best as the uh, manager of fighters, including the former 140 pound champion, uh, Jose Ramirez. And what he said about you, Rick, was, you may or you may or know someone that hates real Rick Glazer one or wants to kill him, but I can tell you, if you need sparring, other services, etc., this guy is beyond reliable, professional, and will get you what you need when you need it. Thick skin is all you need. I think that says it all about who you are, Rick. Right? I, you know, somebody asked me if I was mad at Rick for saying that. I says that's what I. That's the person that I am. I can't get mad at the truth. I mean, you know, it's uh, I'm a career boxing professional. I'm 24-7, 365. I'm reliable. I know, know my that. business. And well, people love to hate me. It's a great thing. You know, I, I'd i rather have people hate me because then at least they respect you. If they if they like you, then they think then you might think they think you're a soft touch. I don't want anybody to get the impression I'm a soft touch. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we have you on because, look, there's so much boxing going on. And you are so plugged into this world. I just wanted to get your opinions as we head into what's going to be a very busy, not only a weekend, a very busy month, and probably the, the entire rest of the spring is packed with fights. So I know you've got to be excited about that. I know you're keeping busy and working hard out there in uh, the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York. To be in, to be in boxing, mm -hmm. okay, and you have to like it to start with. You have to be a boxing enthusiast, a boxing fan to go into it. So... I, a guy like myself, I love the big fights. I love meaning what I call meaning, meaningful and purposeful fights. And we have a whole bunch of those fights between this month and next month. There's not even a question about that. Fantastic, you know, 60 days of, of boxing. Absolutely. I'm not going to do it in chronological order, but I'm going to jump into a nut, the, actually the late the zone fight card that's headlined by Ryan Garcia against Emmanuel uh, to go. Um, talk to those guys, I believe it was last month over at Golden Boy offices. And Ryan, you know, is saying all the right things about how he's really corrected himself mentally and really feels strong about resuming his career at this point. Well, I'm interested, what's your, what's your thoughts on Ryan Garcia? I mean, we've seen him in his last fight against Luke Campbell. He got knocked down. He got off the canvas and, and, and you know, won convincingly, which I think is impressive. But, you know, there's still this kind of elephant in the room of, are you going to be fighting these other guys like Javante Davis and uh, Tiafima Lopez and whoever else is out there for you? Uh, or when is this going to happen? Well, I think he set the timetable back a year and a half by his little hiatus, number one. Um, if I had Ryan Garcia right now, if I was calling the shots, his advisor, I would this to go fight would be one the maxi use fight this summer in the UK and then maybe one more fight this year of significance but not let not the elite fighters of the division and enter next year as a strong horse and a strong candidate with three wins in nine months and uh, walk into next year um you know feeling like a million bucks I, there's a lot of questions about Ryan. Garcia's mental uh, um, um, mentality, fighting mentality, and his overall um, persona as a fighter and his discipline. But the fact that he went to Joe Goosen, which yeah. is more one on one training and more hands on training than Eddie Reynoso, speaks volumes about where Ryan Garcia is mentally, where he wants to do this. If he didn't want to do this, he sure would have chosen Joe Goosen, uh, who's a who's a task mask master as a trainer and as a person. So I think that tells you a lot right there. And I really believe that we are coming back. We're going to see the best of Ryan Garcia. We're going to see a serious fighter. Um, I have more con people say I have more confidence in Ryan than I'm supposed to. Hmm. But I will say that the fact that he chose Joe Goose and says all I need to know about, great. about where he is now. Is to go going to test him in any way? To go is very mechanical, um, like most, most African fighters are. 
and he's a little on the slow side, but he's tough and he's durable and he's definitely a world-class top 10 legitimate fighter. So, so that answer is yes, to a certain extent, because okay. he is a world-class fighter, but he's not that he's not fast and he's very mechanical and he's very easy. We can, when I say mechanical, he's very easy to figure out. He does everything in repetition all over again. He's not, you don't have to think twice about him. You know, what's coming. His route to victory is only by decision. Uh, I don't think he. I don't think he has a route to victory unless okay. Ryan Garcia literally falls apart in the fight. Okay. Okay. Um, now there's another fight on the card, and I know you know, like uh, I call my my show sometimes uh, Pugs Corner on here. I think if we had when we have you on, we should just call it Shots with Rick Glazer. Glazer, and I think that the the fight that I this applies to is I know you got a pretty strong opinion on this one. Gabriel Rosado, uh, you know, the veteran guy fighting Shane Mosley Jr. As, as we said, you know, we cover both boxing and betting. Um, do you have any advice for the betters out there who may be honing in on this fight? Shane Mosley Jr.'s got no shot. The only wow. thing is whether it goes a distance or he gets stopped. It's, okay. Rosado knows as much about boxing, the fight, the fighting part of the game as Bernard Hopkins. Both Philly roots. Both great gym fighters. Obviously, Hopkins has had a lot more success um, as a fighter, but Rosado knows how to fight. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Shane Mosey don't have a clue. Shane Mosey Jr. does not have a clue, and I think it's like uh, it's completely two different level fighters. I think it's a C fighter versus a B plus fighter. Wow, and, and I I just don't believe he's even got a prayer. Um, I just don't see it. I think that Rosado was going to set traps for him all night long that Shane Mosey's never seen before. And mm -hmm. I just think it's completely two different leagues altogether. It's sort of like, um, it's like calling up a single A baseball player to triple A to, um, to, to, to the major league. Wow. And you're 19, and you're 19 years old. Oh my Shane, gosh. Shane Jr. just doesn't have the experience. He just doesn't, he doesn't really, he doesn't know enough to, 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 to rumble with a, with a Gabe Rosado. Yeah, I think I looked up the odds. They were somewhere around minus 240 to minus 280 in favor of Rosado. You say load up on it. Yeah, it's it's a no-brainer. Okay, so. all right. Now let's move on to the uh, PBC card on Showtime, headlined by what I think is a pretty entertaining, interesting fight. You've got a uh, 154-pound uh, weight class, Erickson Lubin, against Sebastian the Towering Inferno Fundora, uh, who's a very, you know, problematic guy standing six foot five and a southpaw. Well, how do you see, and that's a that's a true 50-50 fight. How do you see that one playing out? And are you interested in it? I I don't have a lot of interest in the fight. Um, but I will say that Lubin is too skilled and the towering inferno doesn't use his height. He likes to rumble on the inside. And I think that Lubin's faster and has more skills. Mm. And I think that'll take advantage over size and more ring smarts. And I think that'll take over um, over the brawling um, Fondora, who gives a thousand percent of himself. But I just think Lubin is skill wise at a different level. Yeah, he, he is very willing to fight. That's a great point, Rick. I mean, we've seen him in there. He has no fear, uh, I'm talking about Fandora, of, of throwing his body in there. But the bottom line is, like, we know this. If, it, it seems to me that if there is one thing that he's vulnerable about is that frame of his, which is very lean. So you're saying a guy like Lubin can really expose, you know, find those holes and, and really kind of catch this guy and hurt him. A, a, left, a left guy who, who's... A guy who knows how to fight, got skills and speed, um, is going to give a brawler like uh, Fondora a big problem. Yeah. Um, now the the um, the earlier fight on the zone is, and we've talked about this before. I don't want to be redundant on this. You had a we had a great interview earlier on Fight Hype where you really spoke at length about Ryoto Murata's ability to win this fight against Triple G Gennady Golovkin. Um, that's going to be fought in Murata's uh, home country of Japan on Saturday. Do you uh, do you still feel as if Murata is uh, a very capable uh, guy to win this fight? Absolutely. Uh, he, okay, nothing has changed your opinion. No, it's in the same place. This, this, the, this, the circumstances are the same. 
Um, you know, GGG will be 40 years old the day before the fight. And that doesn't, that doesn't spell well for professional fighters. Um, you know, maybe, maybe would do if he was a poetry, poetry writer, it would help, but, um, we're, this is a physical game and, um, the age, the, not, not, not that the one day would make a difference between 39 and 40. Don't get me wrong, uh -huh. but he's still 40 years old, whether he's 39 or 40, He's still not what he was two years ago. There's no way he could have gotten better. He's gotten worse. He's inactive. The other guy's been inactive too. The difference yeah, yeah. is, the difference is, he's four years younger, and he had a, has had a lot less professional fights. He's only had about eighteen, and I and he's got less wear and tear on his uh, on the tires and then the and the legs. And I really believe that Murata will rise to the occasion in, in his home country. That would be a stunning turn of events, given that Gennady Golovkin has so much to fight for. And we're talking about a third fight with Canelo Alvarez, should both men win their fights uh, this spring. You know, they would fight in September. This is the fight that Gennady has longed for. I mean, how could he possibly let this slip away? Well, he's longed for the Canelo rematch. He hasn't longed for Murata. And if yeah. he was, and if he wanted the Canelo fight so much, he wouldn't have taken the Murata fight. So, I mean, you can't have it both ways. So, I really, I really believe that Murata is capable of winning. Um, everybody points to the fact that he has doesn't have the experience. He's still the WBA champion. He's a he was a gold medalist in the Olympics. He's a big, strong guy in tremendous shape. And I believe, I believe he'll carry the fight um, at the at the end. It'll be close. It's not going to be a blowout or wipeout. It won't be a it won't be a one seventeen one eleven fight. It'll be a one fifteen mm. uh, one thirteen type of fight. But I just think Murata will do it enough to get it done. I think I don't think of all the intangibles, none of them help GGG. And there's too many intangibles and questions in this fight. Um, to say that GGG would be a clear winner. Okay. Hey, I've got to ask you, I, I, uh, I couldn't help but notice on social media you were talking about, and, you know, again, we referred to you in the opening as an international agent, broker, and consultant in the sport, that you had made a trip over to Dubai. What were you doing over there? I attended the, um, the uh, Pro Bellum. Uh, they had two nights of boxing on the 18th and 19th. I was more interested in the 19th, which was uh, Sonny Edwards' fight, the IBF flyweight champ who looked sensational, and our Regis Progre uh, was, over, was um, fighting, and uh, he, he an eliminator, WBC eliminator, and he beat Tyrone um, McKenna from the, I, I don't know if he's from the Ireland or UK, but wherever, he's from over mm -hmm. there. And um, it was a great night of boxing. The night before, it was good, but it wasn't it wasn't the following. It was more like a preliminary night, you know. Um, I had meetings with various people from around the world. It was like a big meeting of the minds. Um, I had the luxury of uh, meeting with Richard Schaefer, mm -hmm. uh, the promoter of Pro Bellum, Harrison Whitman, the promoter of Pro Bellum, and the advisor to also in a separate meeting, of course, separate meetings, all separate. Um, I met with um, um, the one and only, the great Daniel Kinahan, the advisor to uh, Tyson Fury, um, Terrence Crawford, uh, Sonny Edwards, uh, you know, everybody. Just he's got 300 fighters, uh, supposedly, reputedly. Um, and uh, we had a great um, little meeting. A luncheon meeting. We had a great meeting. He's. Uh, we, we've talked about doing business. We've got currently. We have a fighter together. Uh, we just recently signed up, and we want to do more business with one another. And um, he said he wanted to meet me because he wanted to meet the guy that's literally twenty four seven, three sixty five. That he heard from everybody that I'm literally twenty four seven three. That's just not an advertising slogan. Slogan that I literally pick up the phone 24 hours a day. And if I'm on a call, then I call you immediately right back. So um, he was very impressed by that. It's one of the reasons why he wanted to meet me. We have a fighter together that we're currently advising. And um, he wants to do more business with me. And um, like I said, all the meetings were separate. And um, I got, you know, I, I struck a chord with, with everybody involved. Let's put it that way to you. Yeah, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, so many people have interest in uh, what Dan, who Daniel Canahan, Canahan is. 
and uh, how interested he is in staying in boxing for the long haul. Did you get the sense that he will be in the sport for the long haul? And, and what did you make of the man uh, that you met? Basically told me that if he's going to be, a, if I'm going to be associated with him in boxing, um, that I have to treat the fighters with respect. And um, I can, you know, he, you know, not that I was, but he doesn't want me taking advantage of fighters. He wants me to help fighters. He said that uh, one of the rules he hates in boxing is when these guys are overweight, where they take advantage of him and they take between the fine and the penalty, the other fighter, they take 50% of his purse, of the fighter's purse. That's wrong. And he's, he's all about the fighter. He really is very sincere. Um, he's going to be in boxing for a long time to come. He's already been in boxing 10 years now. And um, he's quite a guy. He's very personable. My wife met him. He was very, he couldn't have been any nicer. Um, I would surely call him a gentleman, uh, very well-spoken. And he, con con he conveyed a very good message. And, um, you know, uh, he's, uh, to say the least, he's very knowledgeable um, on his own. And um, he understands boxing from the top to the bottom. And I was very impressed. And um, we, um, you know, I'm going to be working with him, bringing him fighters to advise. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to supply opponents uh, for his fighters, sparring partners, and um, other services that I provide. And um, it's, it's another, it's another great account, international account that I'm going to have as, as is Pro Bellum is. Another account that I'm, you know, now working with. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm there, out there, and to do business and do business in a business-like manner. And uh, I can always use great accounts. And um, there, though, you know, um, Daniel's going to be a great account, and then um, Pro Bellum, you know, Richard Schaefer and Harrison Whitman, they're going to be a great account. Um, they're, 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 you know, they're quality people. Um, let's, you know, face it, you know, Richard, Richard and I have had our differences over the years, which we talked about in brief that, um, but and when it comes down to it, he respects me and, um, you know, what I'm capable of doing, what I do in boxing, my role. And, um, you know, he said, how can you argue with your 31 years of success? I says, no, as an independent operator. And I says, it's pretty tough to do, isn't it? He yeah. goes, yes, it is. So here we well, are. Yeah, and I know he had he had a previous comment that you know tried to uh, penetrate your thick skin, but it couldn't. But you came right back, and I just wanted to end it on this note. I know we each have like a couple, only a couple minutes left. Um, oh, you you came back. You, want. you, you came you back. Like, well, like I've only got a couple minutes, Rick. Right? <laughs> you get as much time as you want. Uh, uh, you, you. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk to you in the first place was. You had a comment that went after someone, and that was you saw a, a picture of Errol Spence Jr., who's going to be fighting uh, Jordanus Ugas uh, next week on Showtime pay per view, April 16th, at uh, AT&T Stadium outside Dallas. And you made a comment you think Spence looks old, old for his age. And maybe, I mean, dare we say, he could be headed to what you you call the back nine of his career. Do you really believe that as he heads into this fight against Ugas that we could see some age on Errol Spence? I think we've already seen age on Errol Spence. I thought when he fought Danny Garcia, he didn't have the legs he used to have. He didn't pivot well. You remember something. You cannot go through two long periods of inactivity and catastrophic injuries from a car accident, and now the eye... Uh, situation and still be the same fighter and be in your 30s. It's impossible. He was a great fighter. That was then. This is now. Mm. There's no way it's inhumanly possible. A guy who was in, remember, you're not firing with headgear on like you are in sparring. And remember, you're, you got small gloves. They're going to be in eight ounce gloves. They're either 47 pounders. Mm -hmm. you're, he's going to flinch. When he sees uh, punches coming, he's going to be a little hesitant to get off. He just had eye surgery. This is not a tune-up fight. The reason why everybody asks, why didn't Earl take a soft fight going in? Because to get paid the kind of money Earl gets paid, you can't take a soft fight. you got to fight the best out there every time. The only best fighter he, he didn't fight well, you know, anymore was Danny Garcia. You know, Kenny, you know uh, the Sean Porter was top-notch. Um Ugas is top notch. Um, I just think that 
you just there's no way a person with that two periods of inactivity and catastrophic injuries from the car accident now this and the aging process there's no way he can be the same fighter that it would that that fought uh, sean porter if he loses this fight uh rick the the dream fight that we all wanted against terence crawford is dead it's are you it's saying not happening you? anyways it's not happening anyways it's dead now why do you not, say that there is, it, won't, it won't happen. He's going to he, say, I can't make the weight. Any If he wins, I can't. I can barely make the weight. I'm going to move up. He's going to avoid Terrence Crawford. All that stuff. Let me tell you something. The telltale sign was when he got out, uh, oh, I believe it was the Danny Garcia fight. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe yeah. Sean Porter. When he finished up and said, I believe it was Danny Garcia fight, when Jim Gray, I believe it was Jim Gray, asked him, oh, well, we're going to see Terrence. Well, I'm not thinking about that. I'm I'm going to go up to, to my ranch and play with my horses and my chickens. Can you imagine Marvos Marvin Hagler saying that? He would have said, give me Crawford. He would have, okay, I want to tear his head off and shit his neck. We didn't hear that. We heard a soft-spoken guy talking about playing with horses and chickens. That, that's, that's, that, that's, that tells me he wants no part of Crawford. Forget about that. BS the other side of the street and he's with Aaron, he's not with Al, he's just, that's all bullshit. That's, that's, that, that's called deflection, okay? And he's deflecting the real thing. He, he would get destroyed by Terrence Crawford, destruction. Now, prior to the first car accident, the guy who fought Porter, that and Crawford was an even fight. I don't know who would have won. I, a little slight edge to Crawford because he's a switch hitter and a little slight edge to Crawford because he's got a, more of a mean streak in him. But, but now, no way, no how. Mm. It's, it's no prayer. Crawford is Crawford now, okay? He's still Crawford. The other guy's not Spence anymore. That was then, this is now. Great. Hey, if you want the truth, according to Rick Glazer, pick up the phone, call Rick Glazer. Thank you so much for answering. We loved it, uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you again. Again, if you want to uh, check out Rick's work, he can be uh, reached or, or uh, looked at at glazerboxing.com and on Twitter. Please follow him. Uh, very entertaining follower, as, you, as you've as uh, you heard. He knows so much about the sport, and it has so many colorful opinions. Real Rick Glazer one uh, on Twitter. Okay, thank you so much, Rick. Appreciate it. Have a great uh, day. Have a great week, and enjoy these fights. Lance, I only have one question for you. What so it took so it took me it took you so long to have me on again? <laughs> we'll get you back on shortly. I hope not so long next time. You ask great questions, and you're you're a true you're a true professional. Thank you so much. You are too. I appreciate your time, Rick. Thank you. Bye bye. Take now. care. Bye bye.